You know, there are many important things in the world which we take for granted. So, than the gases in the air which surrounds us. Do you know what the name of that very important gas is in the air that we all need to live and survive? You're right, it's oxygen. Fortunately for us, all of the green plants in the world give out oxygen. We breathe it in and it allows us to continue living. You might say, hey, this sounds a bit one-sided. What do we do for the plants? Well, every time we breathe out, not only us, not only people, but also all animals, we breathe out a gas called carbon dioxide. Guess what? Plants need carbon dioxide to live and survive. So there's a cycle. They help us, we help them. Well, both of these, oxygen and carbon dioxide, are invisible gases. We can't see them, but we can make them and we can look at some of the things that they do. And that's exactly what we're going to do now. Here's how you make carbon dioxide. You simply take a bottle of mineral salts and you get that ready with some cold water. Maybe you do this every morning or maybe you do it when you're feeling a bit sick and you mix up the mineral salts with the water and before very long you have lots and lots of bubbles forming. Well, can you guess what those bubbles are? From what I've said before, you probably know already that those bubbles are bubbles of carbon dioxide. Now, carbon dioxide is interesting stuff because if you take a flame, and I have here a piece of wood that's burning, if I plunge that into the carbon dioxide, the invisible gas there, look at that, flame goes out. In fact, this stuff, carbon dioxide, is very good as a fire extinguisher, and many of the fire extinguishers which we use in buildings and homes today produce that gas, carbon dioxide. What about the other one, oxygen? How do we make that? I'm glad you asked. We can use two chemicals which you might find in the medicine cabinet or in the bathroom cabinet at home. One of them is hydrogen peroxide, which is used as a disinfectant sometimes, and it's also used as a bleach. If you're going to do this at home, make sure you have an adult there to supervise. Okay, I pour a bit of hydrogen peroxide in a glass and I add to that something else, which you may find in the medicine cabinet. Potassium permanganate, also a very good disinfectant. Sometimes it's called Condi's crystals. Sometimes it's said to be very useful for treating snake bite and other wounds. Now I'll take a small amount of Condi's crystals or potassium permanganate on the end of that wooden stick and I'll drop that into the hydrogen peroxide and get ready for what you're about to see. Lots and lots of bubbles. Now once again, I'll take a burning flame end of a piece of wood and plunge that into it. You can see it doesn't go out, but it seems to get brighter. In fact, if I shake the flame out and put the glowing piece of wood in there, it bursts back into flame. And it'll do this repeatedly. Because that gas, oxygen, is not only allowing a flame to keep burning, but in fact, it's essential for burning to occur. Well, who discovered oxygen? A man called Joseph Priestley, an English minister, 200 years ago, discovered it, but he didn't realize how important it was. A few years later, a French chemist by the name of Antoine Lavoisier, working with his wife in Paris, gave oxygen its name and showed how vitally important it was for burning. Well, I would suggest that next time you take a deep breath, you spare a thought for Lavoisier, for oxygen, and also for all the green plants in the world that make it for it.